Well, what's up, New Hope family? Welcome to New Hope Here. Welcome to the lobby. My name is David. I'm our online campus director. And with me is my friend, Hattie. Hello, everyone. And co-worker. Yes, both of those things. Person. Yeah, all of that. Yep. Got any more? Nope. Uh, yeah, okay. actually. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes host of the lobby. Okay, that is true. Yep. Yep. Sometimes you sit in this chair. Yep. But today you're sitting in that <clears throat> Thank chair. Thank goodness. You usually... <laughs> I like this chair so much better. You usually have uh, like prepared games to play and things mm -hmm. like that. I just uh, come up with a topic to talk about and then bury it into the ground <laughs> for 10 minutes. <laughs> I think that's, you and I are, we have different skills. Sure. Um, yeah. Yours is the art of just like talking and it being good and oh, um thank you for that qualifier that was, that's an important qualifier <laughs> you know like you can just like chat and have conversation you don't have to prepare for it and it's always fun i feel like i i'm not long-winded so if i <laughs> <laughs> therefore implying i am long-winded i don't have a lot to say hmm. usually without being prompted with things so that's why I have to prepare for the lobby. Oh, well, I am your long-winded lobby host, <laughs> and I'm so glad that you've joined us at New Hope here today. I'm just going to talk for like nine straight minutes. Great. And I, that was not meant to be an insult in your ability. I know. That's, I, I took it as a compliment. Great. Talking is yeah. a marketable skill that I have. Yeah, And that's it's about very the only true. one, but that's I'm happy with true. it. It's <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, hey, it's Super Bowl Sunday today. Woo Go sports teams. Yes. Uh, the Vikings are not in it, yeah, which is not surprising. <clears throat> I'll probably cheer for the Bengals. Me too. I like a good underdog. Yeah, they're a tortured franchise, like like my Vikings team. You're a Vikings fan as well. I right? am. Yes. Yeah. When you're from North Dakota, you have to pick like one of those teams that's like from around here. They're the only <laughs> one that's like from around. Well, here. some people pick the Packers because that's like relatively close or like some like people pick the Broncos because it's relatively side. close sure. you know like kind of or Seattle they're all like kind of for North Dakota it's I, relatively <laughs> close. I think Hattie just told us <laughs> Seattle is as close as Minneapolis and that's impressive you're a few states over is what I meant gotcha yeah gotcha yes <clears throat> yes yeah growing up in Minnesota there was no choice it's just yeah makes sense I'm gonna be sad my whole life cheering for Minnesota yeah. sports teams <laughs> I have not I will say I haven't watched a game since fantasy football got done yeah yeah Hattie's very big into fantasy football I do we should have like done it. like a, a our our staff has a fantasy football league mm -hmm. Hattie did not win it mm -mm. she was pretty furious I think I got third it. though that's good yeah you were pretty upset that Andrea won. I, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I love that for Andrea. But she didn't try for like the first four games. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, yeah. she did amazing. She did. She yeah. did a phenomenal job. We should have done a playoff one and you could have dominated. Yeah, maybe. Uh, well, I'm cheering for the Bengals, I think. I don't really care who wins, to be mm. honest. But mm -hmm. I'm probably cheering for the Bengals. Matt Stafford had to play for the Lions for a long time. So it'd be fun for him to win. It's hard to play for the Lions. Um, David, I'd like to point out to you that I'm not Michael or Jordan. And what? so when you like talk about most you know players who outside the Lions of, are. I do. And I actually and do know that name. I do know Matt Stafford. That's good. However, See? that's about as far as I get. I was keeping that's it a, surface that's for a, you. <laughs> <laughs> but you're so good at fantasy football. I figured you knew all of the players from all of the sports teams. And I did know he played for the Lions, yeah. but that's it. My point was, it would it'd be fun to see him succeed after suffering for a long time yes go yeah. matt stafford basically i don't really care who wins i'm there for the commercials i love the food have, i'm there yeah. for the food. well that I, that was uh I, I wanted to hear favorite super bowl food um i love buffalo chicken dip it's a classic oh my in the gosh Midwest. it's so good i don't Probably eat a classic it everywhere. much except for it's not super my bowl. i i next yeah. i don't dislike it it's just it's fine. I wish we had some for the lobby today. That would have really made we our Super Bowl yeah, Sunday. If we were more prepared, producer, we would have had like a full spread of Super Bowl foods. What were we thinking? I don't know. We weren't thinking. <laughs> some wings. I <sighs> gotta have buffalo wings. Yeah. Um, yeah, wings are a go-to. When I watch football, I generally watch it with my dad, and we like to have a Coke together. So, mm -hmm. like a good Coke, a nice cold one. Coca-Cola Classic. Yeah. Vanilla Coke. No, just cherry Coke. Classic. Okay. Yeah. It from a can, not from a bottle. Oh. Mm -hmm. Like a 16-ounce can. Does that matter? 12-ounce can? I, You know, I kind of prefer the 12 just because mm -hmm. that's like the original. The 8-ounce can? No. That's too small. Yeah, I don't I don't like those. It don't don't hinder my soda consumption. Right. If, if, I'm, I'm, gonna, if I'm choosing to drink a pop. I'm going to drink the whole yeah. one. But I can't drink a big one, like the 16-ounce one. Like that's yeah, not going to happen. 
I'll just stick with my classic 12 pounds. What about I am desserts? really disappointed in us for not having football yeah. food on here Next today, Super Bowl. There we go. We'll do that. Um, do people have desserts on Super Bowl Sunday? What? I don't know. I feel like oh, all I word. can think of is like nachos and wings and like dip. Yeah, you have all of that. And then you have like 10 different kinds of bars. Well, if you're from Minnesota, very, maybe. Well, North Dakotans do bars, right? Yeah. I mean, we do bars, generally speaking. But, like, on a Super Bowl Sunday, I, like, I'm, maybe I'm Producer? having a... I, I can't think of specific desserts. This is craziness. Okay, I need the chat to <laughs> back me up on this. Because, like, you have all of those good things, too. But you yeah. have, if ten people come over, five of them bring you know, nachos or wings or whatever, and five of them bring desserts. Or maybe three bring desserts, a couple bring chips. So what are these Super Bowl desserts you're talking about? Because I mean, that's why I was I hoping know. to hear what kind oh. of bars you like to bring. One year, <laughs> Joanna made one. Joanna made one, and it didn't have a name. I, I think she, like, took a recipe and then changed it a little bit. Okay. So I tried to give it the most Minnesotan dessert name I could possibly Classic think David of. move. Yeah. So I named them Barb's Bars. Yes. That's uh, nice. Because I really like the alliteration of it. And Barb is a very strong northern Minnesota name. Yeah. And she sounds like someone who'd make a bar. Yeah. So they were really good. They had like golden grams and chocolate and marshmallow, melted marshmallow. And okay. They were real good. So are those like a classic for you guys now? Like do you make them? Uh, she's personal? made them a few times. I, I regularly <laughs> ask her to make Barb's bars just because I want to say that. <laughs> Whenever she, she, she has much more of a Minnesotan accent than I don't really have one because I was not born there. Um, so when she accidentally falls into it, I usually bring up Barb's bars yeah. just to kind of, you know. If we, producer, could we get like a counter of how many times the word, how many times the word bars have been said on the block? <laughs> <laughs> like ding, I said it again. <laughs> he said maybe next week. We'll, Darn we'll it. have our spread and a bar count. <laughs> That's like very Midwestern. Would bars. you like to say Barb's bars properly? No. We, I've done like accents on I here know. Before. Actually, could you say it with a British accent? <laughs> <laughs> and it hasn't gone over well. I think well, everybody so. at New Hope here would like your British Maybe accent to come back. <laughs> Maybe next year at the Super Bowl. <laughs> we are over-promising next year's Super Bowl yeah. New Hope here. Service. There will be a time when the British accent comes <clears throat> comes back out. Okay. We talked about maybe doing Pastry Month at some point. We did. So that would be a great time. Because of your love of the British baking exactly. show. Exactly. Yeah. I love that show and every contestant on it and everything that they bake on it. Wow. That's a lot of love. <laughs> but we do. I am curious what desserts people bring. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm... I'm flabbergasted. I kind of am too now that you that talk about it. of you. Because I love sweets. Yeah. It's a great addition to the Super Bowl yeah. ac activity. I don't know what. Festivities, I think, yeah. is probably more probably the word you're looking word. for. Yeah. yeah. They mm -hmm. both work. Yours works better. I, I really want to hear what people's <laughs> yeah. bars are. So let are. us know in the chat. Well, first of all, let us know if you do desserts mm -hmm. for the Super Bowl. Because apparently some people don't. Mm -hmm. Which is still weird to me. Uh, but then, yeah, what kind of bars? You, I mean, like, uh, Special K bars are a classic, which I think people here refuse to call by their correct name, and you call them Scotcheroos. I call them. Special K bars when they're made with Special K. No, they're just always Special K bars, even if they you don't use Special K. Scotcheroos at my house, for sure. They're not. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's Scotchers, for they're sure. They're special K bars. They're good, Either way, they're but delicious. not Super Bowl food. I don't know. It's more like camping food to me. Camping food? Like, you bring... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you bring Scotcheroos camping. That's you eat not nachos camping, at then. football. <laughs> camping. I'm I don't know. That's just so what our family did. I'm fascinated by <laughs> Scotcheroos are camping food. Well, let's take a poll. Are they. <laughs> <laughs> do, do special K bars, also known as Scotcheroos, belong at a campsite yes. or a Super Bowl party? I mean, I'm sure they would. I'm sure they'd be good at a Super Bowl party. Camper, yeah, she's in a camper. Yeah, I'm. Da which is not camping. We did a camper camping growing up. That's just up. a house that moves. Still camping. If it's called a camper, I think, it's I think camping. Pastor Mike and I once had this argument on the lobby as well. Because <clears throat> when I go camping, like I want to be in a tent. Ideally, I want to have to have hiked quite a while to where my campsite is. Just different types of camping. That's all. Sure. Yeah. I mean, primitive and non-primitive. Wow. The producer. Thank you, producer. 
just having wise moments <coughs> yeah. off camera well, this morning. Our service is about to get started. <laughs> Every time Hattie's on when I host the lobby, something <laughs> wild comes up right at the end. Like she brings Special K Bars camping mm -hmm. and she has a food Instagram <gasps> channel. We still haven't talked we have, about we'll that yet. That next the day. sandwich. Super Bowl Sunday. The we had sandwich. other things. <laughs> we had other things we needed to talk about. But yeah, we'll get Very to your much. your sandwich Instagram at a later date. Yep. But. Uh, anyway, thank all of you <laughs> for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate you being here. We're so excited. We have a new series kicking off today, and we think you're really, really going to like it. So uh, we will see you in a little bit. Well, hey, church. Welcome to New Hope here. We are so excited that you joined us today. We have an awesome new series kicking off today, some great worship. But before we get into any of that, I would just encourage you to fill out a Connect card. There's a link down in the chat right now. You can click that. It'll bring you right to our online Connect card. You can also fill it out on our app. And there's a button that says Connect somewhere above Michael's head. Somewhere up but there. Yeah, just, yeah, that was very good. Vanna White there. Just yeah. kinda, <laughs> right here, it says Connect. So click that and fill that out. Uh, we would love to know how we can connect with you, how we might be able to help you figure out your next step here at New Hope, answer any questions you might have about the church. And then my favorite part of the Connect card, there's a spot in there for prayer requests. And mm -hmm. we love being able to pray for you. And so if there's anything you need prayer for, any praises you have, amazing things God's been doing in your life, Go ahead and fill out that Connect card and let us know. Yeah, and if you're new today, first off, yes. thank you for being here. Yes. We're so glad that you joined us. Uh, but we want you to type new in the chat or yep. just let us know that you're new or on the Connect card. Yep. And we have a gift that we want to send you just to say thank you for being here. For sure. Uh, also in the chat, you can find a link to our New Hope Here Kids. Yes. Uh, it's an uh, opportunity to let your kids watch a service that's designed specifically yes. for them. So when Pastor Mike gets up and starts speaking, that's they, not specifically they, designed for your preschool. Yes, uh, they might get a little little uh, lost and not want to yeah. pay attention, and so uh, we have a great service that's made by our by our children's pastor. Yep. And, yeah, Pastor Andrew um, does an awesome job with that. Yeah. It's, it's available for you. Get an extra device, and then your kids won't distract it's, you, and they yes. can be focused. It's my really kid, great. My kids love it. I think it was, my, yeah, they yeah. watched it this last Sunday, yeah. and they were they were locked in much more. We love you, Pastor Mike, but much more than yeah. for, for the normal teaching. So check that out. We really, really want to encourage you to be taking advantage of that because it's a really, really great resource. Mm -hmm. And like I mentioned earlier, we have a new series we starting do. today. It's called Bless This Mess. It's about relationships. Don't leave. Don't leave. It's good. It's good. <laughs> but Pastor Mike's going to be teaching us about uh, different aspects of relationships every week. And so I'm really excited for it. Uh, we've got some great worship coming up in this series. It's just going to be really, really mm -hmm. good. We're excited that you're here. Um, great time to start inviting people to, to join you uh, at New Hope here as well. That's right. Let's worship together. Welcome, church. We're so glad that you could join us today. Let's worship together.
faithful. And I think one of the things that we forget is that he longs to speak a blessing over us as we continue to worship. Just let these words wash over you. Oh! 
Well, church, we love being able to worship with you. And right now we're going to continue worship by giving back to God his tithes and our offerings. And you can see the options on the screen right here, or you can click the link in the chat. It'll bring, us, bring you to the website where you can see all those options as well. That's right. And uh, also, we just want to take a moment and encourage all of you who are participating in our 90-day challenge, uh, which is all about tithing. Uh, we want to say way to go, keep it up, and uh, just be encouraged that Pastor Mike is praying for you mm -hmm. every single day as we go about these next 90 days. Yeah. And uh, we just want to pause also as we begin uh, going into the message time and, and pray for you as well. God, uh, thank you for this church family, for this community, uh, how we can just gather together and worship you and, and be in your presence, Lord. And uh, as we um, worship you today, God, we just want to say that you are a good God, that you are our provider, God, that you are faithful to us. Um, and so we just praise you for all of those things, Lord. And I pray that even as uh, people are sitting in their homes or coffee shops or wherever they might be, uh, that they just declare some things about you now in this moment. Um, that you are sovereign, that you are holy, uh, and that we would just really be intentional in our worship with you today, Father. And as we jump into this new series talking all about relationships, I pray that uh, we would just be encouraged to, to better our relationships and to grow our relationships. And uh, God, that we would just draw that energy uh, from you to be able to do that, that we won't rely on our own strength, uh, but really seek you uh, as we... Um, yeah, as we better and improve our relationships. And so we thank you just for this opportunity to learn and to grow in that area. And so God, uh, we just give this day over to you, Lord, and ask that uh, your will would be done in, in our lives and the people around us, Father, uh, that we would be encouraged, um, that we would feel uh, your love and, and your presence. And um, yeah, God, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, grab your Bibles, grab your note-taking guide. We are going to dive into a brand new series. Who's ready for a new series on relationships? And we'll get there in just a moment, but I want to give a shout out to all of, all of you who are joining us and are part of our gatherings. And if you call New Hope here your primary place, your, your primary church or campus where you connect and, uh, and get your teaching and worship together, but you are not in a gathering I want to urge you, encourage you, any other word I can come up with, get in a gathering, begin a gathering. I'm going to ask our team to put a link in the chat right now. In fact, let's put it on the screen right now as well for you to get some information about beginning a gathering, starting a gathering, getting in a gathering. Actually, where we get the word church from, it's the word ekklesia in Greek, and it means gathering. We were not meant to just sit and watch by ourselves, to sit and take in by ourselves. We were meant to grow best in a group, and we've talk, talked a lot about that lately. And I wanna, I'm going to continue to encourage you and challenge you. Uh, to start a gathering. Now, if, if another church or if one of our other campuses is your primary campus and, and you're diving in because you can't make it there or you just want to hear the message again, then welcome. I'm so glad that you're with us. We've titled this brand new series, Bless This Mass. And I love, I love this title because it just describes the reality that we all live in when it comes to our relational world. Think about this. Every one of our relationships, friends, family, work, single, married, parent, neighbors, classmates, every stage of life, student, young adult, adult, whenever you move from young adult to adult, I'm not sure where the line is there, middle age, senior, at every relationship, the number, the kind, the season of relationships may change, but we all, unless we're isolated living in the wilderness somewhere, we all have this amazing network of people that we interact with with, that we live alongside of, that we go to church with, that we're in small groups with. You hear me? Get in a small group. That, <coughs> excuse me. That we serve with. Maybe we work with or maybe we fight with or put up with or make we, maybe we make decisions with them or for them. People we grow with, we laugh with, we cry with. And the list goes on, but we all have this amazing group of relationships. And as we begin this series, I want to give us one big truth. One big truth, and maybe kind of a difficult truth. Difficult truth to hear when it comes to a relational world. And if you're taking notes, 
you want to write this down. If you've, got, if you've gone to the YouVersion app, you can begin to fill this in. Here it is. All our relationships are messed up. In fact, let's say it together. Wherever you're at, just say it out loud so people, maybe people who have no idea you're listening with headphones on or whatever if you're by yourself, say it out loud and they'll stare at you. Say this out loud. All our relationships are messed up. Anyone feel encouraged to be at church today? <laughs> but here's the truth. You and I can't grow and we can't clean up the relational messes that we're in so often unless... Unless we're honest about where we are. Unless we understand where we are. So as we begin this series, I want to invite you to, to just think about your relational world. In fact, pull out something to write with or maybe just grab your phone or a device and write down the names or the initials of the first three relationships you think of. Doesn't matter whether it's family, neighbors, whatever. First three you think of. First three that come, mind, come to your mind. And then I, and I want to invite you to think about those relationships. That any of them, have any of them gone the entire time and never had any messiness? Never had anybody pretending to be something they weren't? Never had anybody, any kind of misunderstanding that needed to be corrected? Never a fight? Never any selfishness? Never any blame? Never a moment when you thought, will we make it through this? Probably not one of those relationships has never had any messiness. If you never have, I would question whether it's a real relationship or I would say it's coming. Grab your Bibles and turn to the very first book of the Bible because we're going to talk about why every relationship is messed up and what we can begin to do about it in this series. We, we're in, in the book of Genesis in the last series and, uh, and we're looking at the life of Abraham, but I want to go all the way back to the beginning. Genesis chapter 1, the very, very beginning of the Bible, very beginning of human history, tells us God made everything. And at the end of every day, what's he say? He says, it's good. It's the way it's supposed to be. And then one day he creates Adam and Eve and he says, it's very good. And he gives them the boundaries. He said, I've entrusted you with leadership over everything, influence over everything. We're going to partner with this thing together and, and do amazing things together. But, but there's one thing, that tree over there, don't eat from it. Don't eat from it. Now, I know the question always is, if God didn't want them to eat from the tree, then why did he put it in the garden, right? It's like, why would you put that there in front of them? And you ever, have you ever wondered that? And, and let me give you the answer. Here's the answer. The reason God put the tree in the garden is because he loved them. And he wanted them to love him. He said, what's love got to do with it? It has everything to do with it. Because God is love. He's not just loving. He is love. God, and we, he made us in his image. He created us to be loving and to love. And here's the reality of love. You cannot love unless it's a choice. And God knew that. He didn't put the tree there to tempt them. He said, I want to teach you how to love. And love is a choice. And we know Adam and Eve's choice, right? Love or selfishness. Trust God or trust myself. Trust that God's way is the best or say, uh, I, I'm not sure I trust God completely. I think I can decide a little bit better. And they chose themselves and it changed the chemistry of everything. You say, why did, why did that change so much? Well, think about it this way. Think about it this way. It's not that God punished. It's the result. Every, every year about this time, January, February, we have... We go, uh, so many of us go kind of through this thing of, I need to get healthy, I need to get healthy. And, and we've got a choice. Now, you might have a choice to stay healthy, let's say you're already healthy, or to choose what everybody else might say is freedom. Eat the way you want, do the things you want, eat all the jelly bellies you want, all the potato chips you want, sit on the couch and binge Netflix all you want. That sounds like freedom. Staying healthy sounds like, oh, I've got to stay within this box. It sounds like less freedom. But what do you do if you make all of these choices to pursue all of your appetites without any limits and without any boundaries? Is that really freedom? 
Well, at first it feels like that, right? But eventually it begins to do what? It begins to change the chemistry of our bodies. It begins to change our makeup. It begins to weaken our immune system. And what we thought was freedom eventually limits us, limits our choices, limits our life, limits our lifestyle and disease and all kinds of things and health begin to break down. That comparison isn't perfect, but it gives us a kind of mental picture of what happened when Adam and Eve chose what sounded and tasted and looked like freedom. Their idea of what was good felt good maybe at first, but they recognized very quickly, and sometimes we take much longer than they did, that to choose what looks like freedom and to go outside of God's boundaries actually will begin to limit us. And there were results. It's not a punishment of God. It's a consequence. We talked about in our last series that God created things to work best within certain boundaries. And when you go outside those boundaries, what happens? Things begin to break down. And the number one thing that got messed up was relationships. And God tells them that from day one. So Genesis chapter 3, right after they'd made that choice, here's what happened. Genesis chapter 3, let's Start with verse 8. I'll put it here on the screen in case you don't have a Bible right in front of you. Here's how it starts. The, then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. This is the first time they went, God, we aren't sure we want to be around you. But the Lord God called to them, where are you? And I know we say, why would he call to them if he knew where they were? We'll come back to that. Verse 10 he answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And God said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? And again, he knew the answer, but he was giving them opportunity to respond and to own it. But what do they do? <laughs> I love this. The Lord God said to the woman, no, let's go back to verse 12. The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. In other words, not my fault, her fault. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate it. In other words, not my fault, his fault, not my fault, his fault. You know? Let's skip down to verse 16 for sake of time. To the woman, he said, and here's where he starts talking about the results of this. They thought it was freedom, but there's a price to be paid. It will begin to mess you up. I'll make your pains and childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. To Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. Verse 18, it will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you will return. In other words, not only is our relationship messed up, but there is an ultimate separation. There's death. And in those four verses, we see four things that immediately and, will, and continually cause messes in all of our relationships. Every relationship we have will experience these four messes. And we need to understand this before we can begin to understand how God wants to fix it and restore it. So let's talk about these four messes that came as a result of Adam and Eve's sin, and ultimately your sin and my sin, and, and pull out that list of those three relationships and just think about whether these things have affected or infected those relationships. Here's the first one. Distrust. We hide. What did they do? It says in verse 8, they hid from the Lord. You skip to verse 9. God called to them, where are you? Verse 10, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid. Why was he afraid? Because I was naked. What was he saying? He was saying, there's something about me I didn't want anyone to, to see. I, I'm scared about what you'll think of me. And so I hid. They hid because they experienced for the very first time distrust. And what's, what's at the... What's at the core of distrust? At the core of distrust is what? Fear. Fear of what God would think of them. Fear of what God would do for them. Fear of what, what, what God would say to them. He said, I was naked. And it wasn't just a physical nakedness, although that was certainly important. It was a, there's a part of me that I'm not sure 
I'm, I want to trust anyone else anymore. I, I'm not sure. I, 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 I'm afraid of what you will think of me, what you will say about me. I want you to go back to those three names. Is there any of them that this particular mess has affected those relationships? Have you ever pretended that something was okay with them when it really wasn't? Why did you do that? Have you ever wondered if they were pretending? Or maybe they were holding something back or they lied to you? Or maybe you were, maybe you said, well, the reason I don't is because they just won't understand. They might not react right or kind of embarrassed. Kind of embarrassed. They might think less of me. We have all kinds of reasons for holding back and for distrust, but at the core, it's fear, it's, it's hiding. And that messes up all of our relationships. See, see, here's the deal. The moment you realize that we all, and this is what happened with Adam and Eve, that we all make decisions to do what? To protect and hide ourselves first. And we all do it. Then it affects our relationships with others because we know that our natural tendency is going to be to do what? To protect ourselves, make ourselves look better. And if I know that you're going to make that kind of decision, then it affects my trust for you. And that's just the first mess. Here's the second mess. Lack of ownership. We do what? We blame. <laughs> the man, This as sad as this is, this just kind of makes me laugh because, man, we do this. The, the man said, the woman you put here with me, God. Who's he blaming? He's blaming God. You put her here. It's not my fault. She gave me some of the fruit. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me. I mean, I didn't understand. I didn't know it. And I ate it. It's not my fault. It's her fault. I don't know how many times I've been in moment, moments or in conversations or in meetings where something happens and someone blows up, someone does something, and, and, and you press into it and you go, where did that come from? And the answer I get is, is, well, it's not my fault. It's because of the way I was raised, because, of, because earlier today my spouse did this, or on the way to work this happened. And it's just like, it's just, I, I had someone say this to me recently, and their spouse actually came along and confirmed it, said, that's just who they are. We just learned to put up with it. I'm going, we put up with what? We put up with the fact that it's everybody else's fault for who you are? The thing that I hear most often in marriages that are struggling are phrases like, you know what, I really wanted this to work, but he keeps, and you fill in the blank. Or a phrase like, she'll say to me, you know what, if he would just change, then everything would be okay. In other words, not my fault, not my fault. It's his fault, it's her fault. And it's not just married people, is it? Singles, some of you have jumped from friendship to friendship to marriage to marriage, whatever relationship to whatever relationship, because there's a problem with the other person that you discovered. And you're thinking, I don't want to put up with it. It's, it's not my fault. It's what? It's the blame game. Now, does that mean that every relational problem you have to go, it's my fault? No, that's not what that means. But what that means is we need to understand that most relational, relational messes are caused or are affected somehow by the blame game. By someone or both of you saying, it's not my fault and it's a lack of ownership. And what does that cause? It causes the third mess. Here's the third thing. Pain. In every relationship, what happens? We experience and we cause pain. Maybe you've heard it said, hurt people hurt people. Because of sin, we're all hurt. And so, since we're all hurting, at times we hurt people. What did God say? He said, to the woman, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. To Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. There were certainly physical consequences. It changed the chemistry of the universe. But God also said the result of your sin, selfishness, is that every relationship, starting with your closest ones, the joy of childbirth, the joy of just living life and working side by side, in every one of them, pain will be your constant companion. And it's not just that there will be pain. Here's kind of the fourth mess. Our relationships will just plain be difficult. They'll be tough. 
Now, we talked in the last series that God designed relationships to require time. That's not what this is talking about. This is talking about the fact that it's just hard. We're going to have to work hard to maintain healthy relationships. Let me put those four messes up here on the screen real quick. Distrust, we hide, lack of ownership, pain, difficulty. Think about those three names. Pull out that list of those three names. How many of them have experienced one or more? Probably all of them have experienced at some level those four things. In fact, I would say every relational mess, these four messes are somehow connected to it. Times with my kids, I remember times with my kids, I'd call them out on something and they would lie about it or, they'd bl- or one of the boys would blame his brother and then they'd say things like, Dad, I hate you! And it would hurt even though you know you expect that from your kid. And I just think to myself, why is this so hard? I've talked to so many people who've just said, you know what, I'm done with relationships. I'm done with the dating scene. I'm done with this. I'm just going to keep all my relationships shallow. And when you press into it, it's because they'll say something like, well, it's because every time I get into it, I find out after a while that they've been hiding something or there's something I wasn't aware and it hurt. I felt like they were deceiving and I wish they'd known. And, and you want to press in and say, so you weren't holding anything back either. See, it's always the other person's fault. And they're just like, I just don't want to work this hard. And, and this is just part of our relational world. So what do we do about this mess? And that's the question we're going to wrestle with. In fact, for the next three weeks, we're going to talk about three of the biggest things that have gotten messed up by by these four things, by difficulty, by pain, by blame, and by distrust, and they've just gotten twisted. And these three things, we've misunderstood them, we've mishandled them, and they've just exploded the messiness of our lives. We're going to talk about sex, money, and forgiveness. And forgiveness, those are three huge things. But before we do that, we need to talk about where to begin. And God modeled it for us here in Genesis chapter 3. Here's what he said. Genesis 3, or here's what he did. Genesis 3 verse 21. said, the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. That simple sentence, God modeled three things. Three things. Admit there's a mess. Notice God didn't say, oh, it's okay, and we're going to go on and pretend like everything was just the way it used to be. He said, no, you guys messed up. And there's consequences. There's results. He said, we're going to, we aren't going to cover this up, but we're going to move forward from this point. He made garments for them because he recognized they're going to be hiding. Hiding is going to be normal. Distrust is going to be normal. He didn't deny the results or the sin. He said, let's talk about the fact that there really is a mess. Those of you that have been part of any 12-step group, what's one of the first steps? Admit that there's a problem. I am an alcoholic. I am addicted. I am, for all of us, a sinner. Second thing that God models for us, commit to cleaning up the mess. God didn't run. God didn't do what you and I do. So often for you and I, our pattern is when a relationship gets hard, we walk away, we withdraw, we wait for the other person to come, we go find someone else. We do it with friendships, we do it with jobs, we do it with marriages, we do it with church. It's too hard. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to get into a small group. I tried a small group and it was just too hard. In fact, I've tried four small groups and it's too hard. And what do we do? We give up instead of committing to be part of the restoration process. And that's what God invites us into, which takes us to number three, be willing to take the first step. You notice God didn't sit up in heaven and wait for Adam and Eve to come to him and say, we messed up. What did he do? He came down and he invited them to do what? Into the process, to admit their mess and to commit to cleaning it up. Where are you? Where are you? What have you done? In this series, these three steps are so important. We need to, first of all, admit that there is a mess. When we talk about the things we're going to talk about the next few weeks, from sex to money to forgiveness, we need to, first of all, admit our own part in the mess and commit to doing the hard work, to inviting God in, to cleaning them up, and be willing to take the first step. And by the way, you cannot, you cannot and will not 
succeed in this without first dealing with your relationship with God. And to get right with God, it's the, th- it's the same three steps. Admit there's a mess. Admit that you've sinned. Because you have, and I have. The Bible says all of us have sinned, and we've all fallen short of God's glorious standard. Commit to cleaning up the mess. So when we admit there's a mess, we ask Jesus to forgive us of our sin. That's why Jesus went to the cross, to pay our sin debt and to open the way so that we can commit to following his leadership for our life. And we do that by taking the first step, by a simple prayer. Simple prayer of, Jesus, I admit that I messed up. You can pray it with me right now. Jesus, I admit that I messed up, that I've sinned, and I need your forgiveness. Would you forgive me? And I commit right now to learning to follow your leadership. And that's what we're going to be talking about in the coming weeks. And I just take this step to come back to you. Uh, If you prayed that prayer, if you want to pray that prayer, you can pray that prayer right now if you didn't just pray it with me. But I'm going to pray for all of us, and then I'm going to hand it off to our hosts. And if you ask Jesus to be the forgiver of your life, if you've walked through these steps, they're going to talk about how you can let us know so we can help you take your next steps. Because we all need to be together. Remember what I started out at the beginning? We all are in this together. We need gatherings. We need the church around us. Maybe you've come back to God and wandered away. And you're, you want him to repair the relationship. He'll do that. And let them know as well. And they'll talk about how to let them know. Let me pray for all of us. Father, thank you so much for this promise, for your challenge. God, our relationships are messed up. They're broken. But you promised to restore us. We we don't have to just put up with our brokenness. We can admit that there is a challenge, that there is a problem. You'll forgive us. But you don't just leave us there forgiven in our mess. You invite us to be part of restoring every relationship. And God, we're so excited about that. As we walk into the series, guide us and lead us, challenge us, encourage us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, once again, we're so thankful that you've joined us here today. And as Pastor Mike was ending his message, he gave us an opportunity yeah. for, for those of you who maybe haven't uh, made a decision to follow Jesus. He just uh, gave us a time to be able to do that, to make that decision and say, yes, Jesus, mm-hmm. I do want to follow you. I want to give you my life. And uh, if that was you, we want to celebrate yes, with we you. Do. We want to encourage you. Uh, we are so happy that yep. you have made that decision. Best today. decision you're ever going to make. Yes, it's absolutely. Amazing. And so we just want to be able to give you some resources yeah. uh, just to come alongside you as you've made this decision. Decision. And um, one way that you can do that, one way we love because we love texting, we do. is you can text, text NH Next Step to 97000. All the information is on the screen here too. And uh, we have a devotional for you yeah. um, and just some other ways that you can continue to grow in your relationship with God now that you've made this decision. Yeah, we, we really just hope that today's service was, was valuable for you and that mm-hmm. it encouraged you to take a next step. And so if that next step was what Hattie was just talking about, man, mm-hmm. we're so excited for yes. you. And we, we really hope that you'll, you'll text uh, was NH next step, next step. to 97,000. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, we, w- we would love for you to take advantage of that. For some of you, your next step might be something different. And, and uh, I want to talk about one of those. Pastor Mike talked about at the beginning of his message as well. He talked about gatherings and, and how we need to be in a gathering. Yeah. We're designed to be in community. And so, man, we love our New Hope Here campus and we love all of you and we're so thankful that mm-hmm. you join us. But we also know that God designed you to be in a community. And so while this can be one of those communities we join here online on Sundays, we want you uh, in in a smaller community that's, that's closer together yeah. um, and, and actually in physical contact with one another. Mm-hmm. And so um, if that's possible for you wherever you are, we want you to think about maybe hosting a gathering, inviting people to come into your home and and join you in person you can use our resources we'll come alongside you we'll coach you Um, we have a lot of different ways that we can help you with that but but we really believe that God is calling people that join us at New Hope here to start these gatherings and so there's a link down in the chat and you can click that link brings you just a really really short form and fill out that form and we'll be able to contact you and just talk to you uh, answer any questions you might have um, and and maybe take that next step of hosting a gathering so really want to encourage you to do that Uh, fill out a connect card like we talked about earlier there's all sorts of other next steps that we have as well Um, thank you so much for being here Uh, I really uh, believe that you're gonna love this new series Mm -hmm. that we've started Mm -hmm. bless this mess next week's gonna be another great message from Pastor Mike so make sure you join us and let's go and be the church